Josh, thank you so much for joining us today. So Dr. Josh is a clinical physician, author, and radio show host. Is that correct? Anything that is else correct. to add to the list? Right. Yeah? Okay, cool. So today, Josh, I just want to ask you some general questions of things that I get asked a lot through my blog, and I know that you probably get asked through yours as well. So sure. I want to clear up some common misconceptions around health and well-being. So I think the first question I want to ask you is what your daily non-negotiables are. My daily non-negotiables. Yes. Well, I'll say this. I, I have to start off every morning with a uh, superfood smoothie. So that's one of my sort of non-negotiables. Yes. Um, and I throw berries in there, coconut milk. I get some kefir for some probiotics, mm -hmm. uh, cinnamon, and then typically some greens powder with something like spirulina in it, chlorella, some wheatgrass. So for me, breakfast is a big deal. I typically work really hard throughout the day, get a workout in early. And so uh, that's, a, that's a big thing for me is getting a good good breakfast every uh, every single day. Mm -hmm. So that's, uh, that's one of my first non-negotiables. Okay. And is there, do you have like a morning routine that you do? Like do you do any meditation or exercise or anything like that? You know, I do. Typically, I start off every morning and I spend a, about 30 minutes just uh, with God. I may go out and, and pray for a while or just yeah. spend some time in my Bible doing a devotional. And then I typically go right out and work out. Yeah. So I try and get a workout in really early on in the morning. And I, I, I do, I kind of mix it up every other day. I do uh, weight training uh, one day, and then the next day I do what I call burst training, which is a form of interval cardio. So I work out about six days a week, and workouts typically are about, you know, 45 minutes or so. And uh, But, you know, I, I love my, my mornings. If, if I get started with my smoothie that I talked about, some time with God and then a good workout, mm. you know, I get all that within, you know, really all that in, in about, you know, an hour and a half in the morning. And I really, you know, feel great the rest of my day. Mm -hmm. And what time do you wake up in the morning? Um, typically it's about six thirty. Yeah. Uh, sometimes seven, but yeah, about six thirty. Yeah. Okay. So I asked my fan base what questions they wanted to ask you. And this is what I've got. Okay. The first one is um, how to remove inflammation naturally, and I think the person is experiencing some creaking knees. So okay. Any advice you've got on that would be appreciated. Sure. Well, yeah, you know, there are some great ways to naturally reduce inflammation. Yeah. And what I've found over the years is, you know, you typically don't need to turn to a, a pill first. No. Um, number one is we've got to look at food. We've got to look at your diet. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to go over my top five anti-inflammatory okay. foods that people should be focusing on or food groups. Number one are vegetables. We know that vegetables are high in enzymes and phytonutrients. And so doing green leafy vegetables and cruciferous vegetables like broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, Brussels sprouts. That's number one. Number two is getting more nuts and seeds in your diet, specifically flax seeds, chia seeds, and walnuts. All of these nuts and seeds contain omega-3 fats. These omega-3 fats are vitally important for reducing inflammation. And, and these are they're, they're also full of fiber, which can also be good. The next thing I would say is make sure the only meat you're consuming is wild-caught and organic, or we, we also call pasture to farm raised. I consume wild salmon typically uh, once to twice a week. Mm -hmm. Salmon is full of a type of omega-3 called EPA DHA, which is fantastic for reducing inflammation. Also, I consume a lot of grass-fed beef and pasture dairy products, and so I'll do, um, uh, you know, I'll go to my local farmer's market or maybe order from a company like Beyond Organic. But again, I, I really consume a lot of grass-fed products, especially mm -hmm. in the meat category and wild-caught fish. You know, the other things that reduce inflammation, let me talk about supplements. One thing that I know a lot of people already take, but Buying a good quality fish oil really is important. There's a lot of fish oil out there today, and I'll say about probably 80 to 95% yeah. that is really uh, oxidized. And that means that it's been turned into a, um, a rancid oil. And so what I would say is, is make sure when you are buying supplements, especially a fish oil, you want to buy a supplement that has some sort of antioxidant in it that keeps the oil from going bad. So look for things like astaxanthin which is an antioxidant found in salmon oil. Look for things like rosemary extract oil. These oils can keep these fish oils good. So, again, typically you get what you pay for. If you're buying a higher-end fish oil, it's typically going to be um, – it's typically not going to go bad on you. But, again, I think fish oil and omega-3s are very good. And then the last thing are proteolytic enzymes. If somebody has any type of joint inflammation, whether it's neck pain, back pain, knee pain, wrist pain, 
proteolytic enzymes found in fruits and vegetables really help. Specifically, there's one in the core of a pineapple called bromelain. And bromelain it has really some incredible anti-inflammatory compounds. In fact, they've done studies on athletes who tore their ACL and different ligaments and tendons, and they found that it actually got athletes back on the field about 50% faster. And so really, proteolytic enzymes are very, very powerful at reducing inflammation. And there's some great formulas. In fact, there's a formula out of Germany that's produced by a company called Garden of Life, and it's called Wobenzyme. And that has bromelain in it. It also has papian, which is the enzyme that's out of a pineapple. But these enzymes are also really, really effective at reducing inflammation. Let me say one more thing with this. Also, getting sugar out of the diet. Sugar causes massive inflammation and so taking some time and really removing sugar out of the diet and then a lot of the high glycemic carbohydrate foods especially grains that contain gluten getting those out of the diet will also really cause people to say some really see some significant reduction in any sort of you know inflammation absolutely what i'll do is i'll try and find um, a a uk-based fish oil supplier that i can put at the bottom of this this blog, so people right. can kind of know where to go for good quality because there's so much rubbish out there. Really there's so me. much. Um, you know, people say I've got a multivitamin <laughs> from Tesco, which here is like Walmart, but yeah, kind of not as great. And um, you know, the quality of vitamins that are sold in supermarkets just aren't. They aren't. There's no quality whatsoever. Well, yeah, and you know, what a lot of people don't realize is some of those supplements can actually have bad health effects for people. Yeah, you know, if you look at something like like you're saying from companies like. Walmart, they produce uh, vitamins that are made from synthetic rocks. In fact, there's a the type of calcium that they put in those supplements today. It's called calcium carbonate. And this form of calcium has been shown to get lodged in women's arteries. In fact, a lot of women think, hey, if I take calcium supplements, it's going to increase my bone density. What we're finding today is the calcium that most people are consuming because it's not a natural form that calcium will get lodged in the arteries causing calcification of the arteries. And so, again, you're better off, like you're saying, uh, Polly, yeah. actually investing in your health, getting a good brand. Don't go, don't buy your supplements at the drugstore. Go to a local health food store, buy from a reputable br- yeah. brand, and eat what I take what I call real, just like I talk about eating real food yeah. rather than fake food, same thing. There are real supplements and fake supplements, and we should be looking for things on the label that maybe even have fruits and vegetables on the nutritional label when it comes to our supplements. That is awesome advice. Thank you. Yeah. Um, inflammation is, I mean, people don't understand that inflammation is so prevalent within, you know, in the modern day world, and no one really understands what inflammation is, which is part of my mission, I think, to inspire people to understand the, how their body works and the food that they're putting into their body and what effect that's having in terms of the inflammation, which then has um, an impact on whether you develop chronic disease in the future. Right, absolutely. You know? Okay, so the next question is that someone wrote, they wanted to live a healthier life, but what can someone do if they are absolutely in love with sweets? <laughs> Well, you know, um, and first off, we may ask the question, why are they in love with sweets? Because now I also say this, everybody's got a sweet tooth, okay? I like, uh, you know, a piece of pumpkin pie or apple crisp as much as anybody. So I found, and I'll share with this in a second, that there are some incredible recipes uh, that you can follow. And just finding replacement ingredients in terms of a healthier form of a sugar, yeah. that's one solution. But also, there are a lot of people today who struggle with issues like candida and yeast. And, and this is women even more than men. Absolutely. But a lot of women have these, uh, again, th- these bad bacteria or yeast that really will feed off of sugar, which will cause these sugar cravings. So the first thing I would say is try and reduce your overall sugar intake. And one of the things you want to do is I'm always into refining replacement. So I don't want to take something from you without telling you what to do instead. Yeah. But actually adding sour foods into your diet can really reduce sugar cravings. And, you know, in, I'm sure, both in Europe and in the U.S., uh, but for the most part, people consume a lot of sweet and salty foods. But we've really forgotten about sour. And adding more sour foods in your diet, typically if something is sour, it means it's high in probiotics and high in something called organic acids, which are so important 
for your overall digestive health. So what I have my patients do is I have them start consuming more sour foods and doing things like uh, kefir from their store and yogurt and fermented vegetables like sauerkraut and kimchi and just really trying to get apple cider vinegar, you know, getting more of these sour foods. And actually, if you consume some sour foods after your meals at the very end, you'll notice that some of your sweet cravings will be reduced. So that's step one. And step number two is rather than using the processed sugar, even cane sugar, my favorite uh, sweeteners are stevia and raw honey. I go to a local farmer's market and get raw honey. That's what my wife and I both use in most of our cooking recipes. I use stevia and a lot of things. And so again, if you do those replacements rather than the processed sugar, all of those things I think will help with uh, with, with yeah. fighting off the sweet cravings. Absolutely. And I think, you know, I, I actually use stevia um, here as well in my recipes because what I love about it, and I, I sell the, the liquid stevia through my site and because you could just add it to a smoothie rather oh, than yeah. like a handful of dates, which obviously do yep. you know, add to the glycemic load. And you can just add a bit of stevia. It's got no calories. Um, yep. It has no effect on the blood sugar. And it sweetens things up by you know quite a considerable amount with just the smallest mitt. So it's great. I love it. It is great. And dates are great as well. That's another thing yeah. that we use. Uh, my wife and I have a, uh, a healthy carrot cake recipe that we love and Excellent. our own food bars we make with almonds and chia seeds and dates. And so, yeah, those are those are fantastic sweeteners. Yeah, absolutely. And a little touch of stevia in a cup of hot water can do wonders just after a meal to, to stop the cravings. You got it. Yeah. Okay, the third question I got back was, um, what are the best preventative aging practices um, so say, what are the best foods to add into your diet for anti-aging? 